Warning, this video will contain major story spoilers to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Who is Penny's father? Penny is one of the three major rivals in this game, and in a way serves as one of the major villains of the game, being the true boss of Team Star, Cassiopeia. Despite this, Penny is a character who we know very little about. We learn from the game's story that she is from Galar, and that she despises her family, and specifically her father. But besides that, there's not much told about her or her past, and why she is the way she is. But what if I told you that her dark history with her family and her father actually reveals everything about her character and all her secrets? Brace yourselves, because I'm about to explain to you why Penny's father is actually Chairman Rose. Before finding out that Penny is Cassiopeia, we learn a little bit about Cassiopeia's history throughout the course of Operation Starfall, and one of the biggest things we learned through Mr. Harrington during the raid with the Fairy Crew is that not only did Cassiopeia take the blame for the whole incident with Team Star a year and a half ago, but they were also sent to Galar by Mr. Harrington for some time to rest, and Mr. Harrington had labeled this simply as overseas study back at home, meaning that Penny is really from Galar and not Paldea. The next big thing here is during our time in Area Zero, where our three rival characters have their banter about their own respective families, the first thing that Penny mentions about her own family is that they're unbelievably annoying. We then learn that her family, or rather her father specifically, is super overprotective, loud, clingy, and makes up weird names for her like Pen Pen, and apparently he's the most annoying guy in the world and the worst, though I'm not so sure how seriously we can take that, though maybe there's a little bit of merit to it. So these two things alone help us learn a lot. So far the facts are this, Penny is from Galar, Penny has a family that consists of at least her father, but through what she's saying, there are definitely more members to it, and most likely a mother around. And her father is overprotective, loud and clingy. Now Galar doesn't have that many notable male characters, it's mainly the gym leaders and a few other characters, but the one character that really stands out and matches the description here is Peony. Peony as we have seen is a loud, clingy, overprotective, annoying father who makes up weird nicknames for his daughter Peona, and this actually matches up really well. Not only is Peony a hacker and competent with machines and all, fitting really well with Peony's specialization in steel types, but Peony and Penny's names come from the same word, Peony, making the connection here almost unavoidable. However, there is a glaring problem with this whole thing. Peony is a married man, a happily married man, and while this may work in favor of Penny, Peony has a daughter already named Peona, with no second daughter in sight, and judging by how affectionate Peony is to his family and specifically his daughter, he probably would be the same way if he had another daughter, but since we don't hear of anyone of the sorts, it's more than likely that the second daughter doesn't exist at all. But Penny being from Galar and having such a similar name to Peony is still too big to ignore. It must lead to something. So then I thought of taking this theory another route. A route that surprisingly works out much better. If Penny isn't Peony's daughter, then she must be Rose's and I'll explain why. First of all, Rose is probably the richest man in all of Galar, and that man is definitely rich enough to afford overseas study for Penny without her family needing to come and stay with her, most likely to take care of their own business and whatnot, which in this case for them would be Macrocosmos. Penny being the daughter of the head founder and lead of Macrocosmos would also make sense as to why she called her own little team Team Star, a small part of the Macrocosmos. And if it means anything, Cassiopeia is also supposedly a rather big consolation. Penny being a hacker also fits better under the idea that Rose is her father than Peony, since Macrocosmos is all about their machines. They have money, they have tech, and Rose is also a steel type expert, adding plenty to Penny's hacking skills and knowledge with machinery. Rose also being Peony's brother would obviously be why Penny's name is so similar to his, as Rose and Peony are brothers and did share a strong relationship as children. Rose and Peony once caught a Cuffin as children, and that Cuffin has remained with Peony ever since and has now become a Copper Raja. It's something that Peony has to remember Rose by. Rose doesn't have anything of the sort in return, so what better way than to name his own daughter after the brother he cared so deeply for? and let it be known that the fallout between the two brothers has only ever been mentioned from Peony's side. Never has it been said that Rose feels any animosity or anything towards Peony, so I think this is a very viable possibility. On top of that, since they are brothers, it is possible that Rose and Peony share some similarities in their personality. Yes, while they may be so completely different on the periphery, within their families and intimate circles, they may act in similar ways, and in Peony's case as we mentioned earlier, he is everything that Peony described her father as. And on top of that, he's a total goofball. Rose has also been shown to be a complete goofball. In fact, when you're with him in the restaurant and he's in the shades and shorts, 
he's a totally different man. He's actually very similar to his brother when he's like this. And it makes me think, would he be how Peony is to Peona with his own children? Loud, clingy, overprotective, weird nicknames? I think yes. And of course, if Rose was the father, there obviously must be some kind of mother. And to that, all I have to say is Oleana. Yeah, you know where I'm headed with this, but just bear with me for a moment. Let's just assume that Oleana is the mother for a moment. This once again would add to Penny's reasons for being a hacker, as Oleana seems to be a bigger tech whiz between the two, as we've seen her dabble with machinery and even was a lab assistant in the past. Oleana being the mother also makes sense as to why Penny is a child with a rather fair skin complexion, as she is a lot lighter in skin tone than Rose, but actually a bit darker in tone than Oleana. A mix of both is what tends to happen with kids who have parents of different races or skin color. I would also go ahead and say that Penny's eyes and Oleana's eyes, as well as their low self-esteem and reserved personalities, also match fairly well. That's as far as the similarities go between Oleana and Penny, but I think we all know that if Rose did get together with any woman, it would be Oleana, since she's so devoted to him. But there's a huge problem with this. Rose and Oleana only seem to share a professional relationship. They only address each other professionally. They don't seem to share a mutual romantic relationship of any sorts. In Sword and Shield, that is. But what if I told you there's evidence to prove that not only does Oleana find Rose after the events of Sword and Shield, possibly leading them to have a romantic relationship, but also that Scarlet and Violet does take place much later than Sword and Shield. Let's start by talking about Oleana and Rose meeting up with one another after the events of Sword and Shield. Of course, after the events of The Darkest Day, Chairman Rose is said to have turned himself into the authorities and is never seen ever again in the game. However, in the Crown Tundra, Oleana comes in search of Rose, hearing that there are rumors of him seen around there. Now tell me, if Rose really turned himself into the authorities and was locked up in jail, don't you think that Oleana and the rest of Galar would know where to find him? Why did she come in search of him in the Crown Tundra? It's because for one reason or another, whether he actually turned himself into the authorities and was later let go or not, his whereabouts are truly unknown and Oleana is in search to find him. Otherwise, she wouldn't have any reason to search at all. And seeing how devoted Oleana is, she definitely would have searched till the ends of the earth to find him. And you know what? I have evidence that she actually does. Not from the games, but from the anime. In the anime after the events of the darkest day, Chairman Rose actually goes missing, with no one knowing where he is or anything of that sort. But in Pokemon Journeys episode 132, the climax between Ash and Leon, when Eternus reappears, you can actually see Chairman Rose with Oleana in Rose's casual outfit, blending in with a normal crowd in Galar, meaning that Oleana did in fact locate and find Rose after the events of Sword and Shield, and that they are indeed together. Now, does this confirm anything romantic about them? No, but it is a very strong possibility, of course, and I'm sure that most of you would agree with me there. But here's the next question. Okay, so if Rose and Oleana did have a child in the form of Penny, how the heck is she this old in Scarlet and Violet? Surely there must have been a significant time jump for this to happen. And there has. And thanks to the help of my good friend Birdkeeper Toby, I can show you that Scarlet and Violet does at the very least take place after Sword and Shield. The most obvious piece of evidence for this is the capabilities of the Rotom phone. The Rotom phone has been upgraded and is much, much more advanced than the one in Sword and Shield, showing that it is at the very least confirmed to take place after Sword and Shield. How many years after though? That's the question. It could be 1 or it could be 10. We don't know. However, if you go through and read some books in the school academy, you'll run across a book called Galar A History. This is actually Sonia's book where she talks about the events of Sword and Shield from a perspective of all the events at Stolen Side where Bede actually used Copperaja to destroy the mural there. And this book is the true history of Galar told by her. Now does this mean to say that 10 years have passed? No, but is it possible? Yes. The fact that this book has made it into an academy this prestigious makes me think that Sonia has made quite a name for herself over some time, but we can't say for sure. How likely is it that we have a 10 year time jump? I'm not sure, but to me, personally, it all lines up too well. Penny even has the colors and symbols of Zashin and Zamazenta all over her. The light that shined during the darkest day, possibly making the light that shined during Rose's darkest day, which again ties to Team Stars and her being Cassiopeia. Yes, her team is full of evolutions, which has nothing to do with Macrocosmos or Rose, but what do little girls from Galar always wear? That's right, little Eevee costumes, which explains her and her whole team. And even if you look at it from the villainous perspective, both Rose and Penny only had good intentions with their teams. 
It was just good intentions gone wrong, and they were both ready to admit their mistakes, and both ready to turn themselves in. That's not something you usually see in Pokemon villains, so in every way I feel that not only do the hints about Penny's annoying family and father point towards Rose, but her characteristics, money, affluence, appearance, capabilities, and evil team motivations all link to both Oleana and Rose make me think that they're absolutely her parents. This could also add to why Penny is so shy and reserved, as she doesn't want to be seen or known as a child after learning about the events of the darkest day. And hey, maybe this is why she called her father the worst. But hey, I can go on about this forever, you're gonna have to let me know what you think about this theory, and whether or not you agree that Rose could be Penny's father, and if not, you're gonna have to let me know who you think her father could be. Thanks for watching guys, and thanks a bunch to Birdkeeper Toby for helping me out with this video. Take care of yourselves, have a wonderful day, and I'll see you over on the next video, alright? Later!